All right, so the time has come. We are finally working on the Mustang. Uh, what better time to start a fall project? And it couldn't have been better timing for everything the way it worked out. Um, so the way you're seeing the videos right now, they're so they're a little out of sequence, but it, it's for a good reason. So the last you seen, the Camaro was getting worked on. I still have a video coming out with that. There's content about the Mazda. I picked up something special last night for the Mustang. And this is the key to it. Oh, the heck? So I was told that <laughs> I was told that this is not a Challenger, but that is a it's a Chrysler logo. Anyways, so there's a hint, I guess. I mean, we're moving forward with what I was talking about. Underneath that big beautiful tarp, there's a 6.1 liter Hemi motor attached to it. It's actually a manual, a six-speed, the TR6060. I'm stoked about this because I talked about going with a 400, which I picked up, but. This came together as a kit. Um, let me actually unwrap this and we'll get back to it. Hold up. All right, are you ready for it? You ready? Ah, there it is. So, you were looking at a 2011 6.1 Hemi. Engine, transmission, harness, ECU dashboard, or dash, not dashboard. Obviously, there's missing everything else. And, fuel tank so this thing starts and runs as it sits got the exhaust right there don't mind the trees we'll we'll worry about that later so this is a uh, a drop-in kit if you will not very drop-in considering that I'm going to have to make everything for it to fit such as motor mounts so it's just sitting on these still brackets holding it up perfect uh, apparently they make a bracket for the transmission to the Mustang so I'm gonna order that tonight get that on its way the shifter appears to be shifted back further this way I need to buy the plate that moves it up so I think that's the right location I'm gonna wait on that actually until I get it up in the car this knocks out a huge chunk of things that I needed to do so it's, it's great it's perfect I got it for a really decent deal um, I got it from Rust Buckets and Restos here on YouTube. Great guy. So you should go check out his channel. He's got some really interesting stuff. A lot more daunting than what is going on with this Mustang. He uh, full on strips a car down. Sheet metal. All that fun work. It's not for me. <laughs> I'm going to grab a battery. We'll stick this to this guy down here. While I'm thinking about it, I'm not going to put it on a Terminator quite yet. I'm just going to run this factory system up until I do a couple things in the future. Um, I'm, I'm going to do HP tuners in the meantime, so we will get through all that. But let, let's grab a battery. Let's get this started. I want to hear it. I'm sure you want to hear it, too. All right, so positive side's on, and then we just need to attach a ground. Let's get this in here. There. Got a key. Tells you mileage. Amount of miles is gone. Ignition mode off. Ha. Sounds just like a car, right? That was awesome. Let's see if I whack the throttle if it opens. Nope, not yet. <laughs> Alright. Um, you guys hold the clutch down. Hold on. May not be enough juice, hold on. All right, we got the jumper box on it. It's maybe halfway charged, so. Hopefully that helps. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I heard it run last night. Maybe it's my ground situation. That's gotta be it. 
those jumper cables were shit. So I hooked it up a little bit different. Let's, uh, let's try a third time. Maybe that's the charm. Ah. I know what's wrong with it. I unplugged the plug for the fuel <laughs> pump. Oh. I had no gas. So I had this, uh, this unplugged. Hey. Uh, throttle body check when it starts. It does. Cool. All right. So it runs, and it runs well when you have the fuel pump hooked up. Um, so shout out to uh, Cleveland Performance. It's where it came from. The gentleman I bought it from bought it from them. Like I said, Rust Buckets and Restos here on uh, YouTube. Go check them out. Great. Now it's ticking because it was a little nice and warm. Lovely. So now i got to figure out how to get this thing off of this trailer because, I mean, geez, look how big it is. It is wide. It's all the way against this wheel well. And there's maybe uh, six to eight inches there. So what I might do is employ my Camaro to pull it off. I might put my ramps down. That sun's bright. Hold on. So I might put the ramps down so that it can slide along those and pull the trailer a little further forward and use the Camaro to pull it off since I really don't have a great way to get it into my garage because it's a pretty tight bend. So let's get working on that. We got the trusty tow pig over here while I'm lining up to get this. It just sounds so good. I don't care what you say. So normally I'm not sketched out by something like this, but we're, uh, we're pushing the limits on sketchiness, so. POV, you're about to do the sketchiest shit of your life. <laughs> it moved. Woo. It's moving. Good old race car. Everybody needs a junkyard Camaro in their life after that. It speaks for itself. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah, she agrees. So, now I'm going to work on taking this apart and see if I can get it in piece by piece. Hopefully I can get it off of here. Well, for tonight, I was only able to get the motor off of the pallet. So, motor and trans came off together. The harness... And the column and the ECU. Well, actually, the ECU is sitting right there on top. So I pulled the ECU off, but 
all the other stuff's there. It's fine for tonight. I'll have to come back out when it's light and uh, try the rest of that paddle apart so I can get all the wiring out of this. Okay, so the wiring is out. And holy crap, there's so much to this wiring harness. You literally have your ABS module and everything inside of this. So this thing is heavy. You have all the fuse panels, boxes, you name it. They took it out and put it in this. So anybody looking for a, a great kit to swap into something old and they want all the nice new stuff, that's, that's great. But I'm literally not going to use half of that. So what I'm going to work on now is we're going to get the exhaust off, probably exhaust manifolds, and then pull the transmission apart from this so that we can start trying to mock it up to get it into our Mustang. Um, I don't think the factory exhaust manifolds are gonna fit because they're super wide. Um, if you look, they literally stick out on an angle and this motor's already pretty wide. And I don't know how much room I have currently for all that business. So I need to order a K-member also for this car which I think will help out a ton with room on this. I'm gonna probably end up pulling the sway bar and stuff off because this motor is a front sump. I don't know if that's gonna clear the front cam member or not, but you never know until you get it in and measure everything. On top of all that, my garage is currently a mess from all the things going on, so I'm gonna hurry and clean all that up and then we will get to separating this. Well, we got the uh, exhaust pipes off with the cats, so I pulled out the starter that was back here and I'm just going to work my way around and uh, take these bolts off. We'll separate it, and then we will see what's going on. Also, it appears the oil filter's leaking. I don't know if that's the right one or not, because you can see that lip. I don't know if it's tight enough or if it's just the wrong one, but it's definitely something that needs to be addressed. Or that's just how they are. I'm going to say it's not. <sighs> Success. Cool. All right, since we got it separated, I had read that these were a factory twin disc, but I wasn't sure if that was true or not. But so you can see it is. It's got a disc here and a disc here. So it's probably got the one floating disc and the one that's fixed in there. But man, that thing is rusty. Nevertheless, trans is apart from the motor. Now I gotta figure out how to get this up with the hoist. We'll get the Nova out and the Mustang down. And we'll set it in there. All right, so I don't plan on doing this right away unless the exhaust manifolds don't fit on the motor when it goes into the car, but I'm pretty excited about this. I mean, how can you not be excited? It's mirror image. 67 millimeter turbos to go on the 6.1. So I don't know how fit mid is going to be, but we'll get this out and get it down. And then we'll, uh, I guess we'll test at least the motor. All right, so I pulled the intake manifold off of it so that I can get a pair of chains on the front and the back of it so I can lift it up. And while I'm filming, is, you know, they say they're. It was said that there was only uh, 57,000 miles on this motor. If you know what you're looking at, it's kind of hard to. There you go. Those ports are clean. So, if it is a true 57,000 miles, uh, motor looks great. I imagine it's probably healthy. Probably? I don't know. We'll find out. Seems to run well. I mean, we had it firing on the pallet, so we've got to hear it. There was a little bit of smoke out of the, that'd be the driver's side, which makes sense, I think. When I pulled off the uh, intake manifold, you fill the oil up through that hole. There's a port. This guy. So when you fill your oil, it goes through the intake manifold and through that. Well, there was oil around this. So I don't know if there was like a slight leak and that's what caused the little plop, little puff of smoke to come out. It wasn't anything serious at all to be concerned. Um, valve stem steals will cause that and apparently that will too. I don't see any of the valve stems leaking so I'm going to go ahead and just chalk it up to that and we're going to look the other way. 
we got a bunch of stuff out of the way. The fuel rail is still in the way. I think what's going to happen is when I go to put it in, it's going to hit those two existing mounts that are there. I still need to pull those out. As well, it's going to hit these little pedestals that are on the side. As a matter of fact, I might just take and pull those off real quick. So, this obviously is just sitting in there. It's not actually bolted in. It needs to go back like another five inches. But why it won't right now is because I need to get a oil pan ordered. So that front sump is holding me up. And with that, I'm going to move it back quite a bit. It's almost five inches from... Let's see if I can show you guys. So, do you see this bolt here, back here? So from that bolt to, well, to that one right there, where I'm pointing, that's just a little over five inches. So I'll have to just modify the mounts, which is fine. I expected that. It is not big of a deal. It's a little crooked. If you look at it, it's gonna angle this way. And it needs to come over this way a little more. If I do that, it's gonna have plenty of room. It's gonna fit really nice, actually. It might get a little tight around the brake booster. It's to be expected, it happens. And then steering linkage down there. It's not hooked up to anything. I need to go get a rack so I know how much room I have. Where that bolt is is where it should go across. And I don't wanna do anything until I have that in, so. With that being said, though, check it out. Oh wait, you see garbage is in the way. It's almost like a Mustang was supposed to have the Hemi in it. And then when I was popping this uh, front off real quick, I was looking at the crap that they did to fix the top of this. Oh hey. There's a couple things in there. Anyways. This one's booger welded to hold it in place. This one was. That one was booger welded. real safe. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop the motor out. It uh, needs to come out, figure out some mount issues, take it off. I'm going to take the oil pan off and get one ordered. And then we can go from there. But for the most part, it seemed to fit okay. The motors kind of sit offset in these cars to the passenger side. So still needs to go over this way a little bit. But for the most part, it'll be close. I mean, I can get exhaust manifolds up in there still see there's room for plenty right now for a radiator and it still needs to go back and then obviously it'll open up more here I got quite a bit between the top of the radiator support and I'll get that bottom cut out I'm gonna probably have to remove all the AC stuff for now I'd like to keep it if I can but if not it ain't no big deal I'm gonna wrap this video up with uh, what I just found so the motor's been sitting for a while obviously and Usually when things sit, they rust. Obviously it's got rust all over some other various parts of the motor, but come to find out one of the cylinders has some rust in it. I was down just looking, going over some things, and let's see if I can show you this. Well, you can see where it's blurry. That is rust on the top of the cylinder. It should not be like that. I was looking at the hot sides to uh, see if they were leaking. Some of them have some wet stuff on them, but I looked down in there because that valve was open and uh, it's not good. So I was going to plan to pull this apart later and ring gap it, but at uh, this point I might as well just pull the heads off and when I pull the oil pan, just pull the rods out and do a light hone. It happens. It's no one's fault. So, till next time. I saw that smile at these big new skirts. Just see if you're paying attention.